All right, we're live. Hi, it's episode 18. Are we logged in? We, we just logged in. Did you did you? Did we log into the your podcast? username and password? Did we log into the podcast? We, we were wondering if we were going to be able to log into the podcast, but we are officially We're here, we're logged, logged into, the into the podcast. Hope everyone's well, happy weekend. Uh, hope everyone had a uh, really good week. It actually was, I know it's my fault. I said it on Friday morning that what? it was going to be a positive week or we had potential and then all yeah, we did was sell up. off all day on Friday. So uh, yeah, markets red, both the S&P and the NASDAQ, hmm. two weeks in a row. Really? Downside. What Doesn't is... really feel like it. Well, we had those hot CPI, PPI numbers, right? So I yeah, feel like we'll, that's fine. We'll get to inflation. It's, Do you it's... believe the thing where they say like a healthy a market, we need pullbacks to be a healthy market? I, I kind of wonder. Sure. For sure. Why, why, be, what does that mean? I don't, think, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a quote unquote pullback, but digestion. Mm. We can go sideways Slow down. for a while and work off the overboughtness. I think it's panic time, man. Two negative weeks. I mean, look at the chart here. <laughs> Brendan, we finally pulled back. Clearly ba over. Yeah, we finally pulled it's, back here. It's over. Uh, you can see the huge move up, and there it is. So we're going back to like halfway. We're basically back to where we were two weeks ago at the, at, you know, at the open. So yeah. uh, we'll find out what happens here with the NASDAQ. We're kind of just going tongue-in-cheek here. I'm not worried about it. It's not terribly dramatic. No. Let's, let's be honest. The thing is, Apple's trying to hold that 170. If that loses it. You know, Tesla's yeah, good, already going down. Uh, lots happening this week, though. BTC all-time highs. We had Ooh, the la, la. whole TikTok Washington event that came and went to no avail. I mean, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit. Uh, Boeing's door debacle continues. There's dish soap involved now. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into that a little was bit. Was it Apple, Dawn or did they say what dish soap I, it was? I exactly, wish there was. Maybe we should buy some Procter you, and Gamble. No, but you know for a fact, if they did, right. the stock would have ripped. That's what I'm wondering. Like, yeah. should we be buying Procter and Gamble on this news? And weren't they using hotel key cards? I mean, I wonder which hotel or it was. Visa then. cards? or Oh, was it a Visa? Okay, so maybe we should look at the Visa stock. It's just, it's so insane. And then I, I don't know what, how much to make of this. Boeing is this really. This poor guy that retired in 2017 from I Boeing. I feel like that's a lot of crap. And he was over in the UK and they found the guy dead. And he retired back in 2017. Is that true? Was, uh, I, I saw it on multiple websites. I mean, no, I mean people do die. Nothing these days. I'm not, like, I don't know the guy's age or nothing. Wait. People but to like to claim that some guy die. got knocked off because he's a whistleblower for Boeing, it's possible. Timing Wouldn't be the is, first time that happened. Timing is convenient. Wouldn't be the first time, but yeah. I don't know. Um, let's talk about Bitcoin to uh, start things off because I do think Boeing's a buy down here. All time highs. We'll talk about it. Oh, crypto. Oh, yeah, let's talk about crypto. Yeah, I wrote down a few things about crypto today to talk about. I mean, the thing about it was, and ooh, I just looked at something that we're going to talk about later uh, as we go. But look, the thing about Bitcoin is we keep going up and down, and who knows where we're going to settle out. I mean, I just think it's become a great trading tool right now at some of these levels. And a lot of traders, I feel like, are using some of the... Uh, volatility in the name to yeah. really just go on. Like uh, I said today, I put on the sticky note for the first time that I bit. Yeah. Because now we're looking at these ETFs with a lot of volume, They're viable. huge, yeah. huge inflows into that. And Bitcoin, I don't even know like what the levels of Bitcoin are that coincide with some of these ETFs. A lot of our focus is just on this now as a security. And I mean, I have Bitcoin. I just had the chart up. Uh, right here. So we're at, at the time of this talk. It's Friday afternoon. We are at a nice little level here for BTC. I'm going to call a 15 minute chart. We had a nice move today up into, I mean, the high 73.7 up here. We've just made that. We had a high of 70,000. This is just in the last hour or so. We went to 70,500 and then we closed at 68 and change. I'm pretty comfortable holding these levels. If you're going to look at a daily chart for Bitcoin, what I wanted to say about some of this investment into Bitcoin is here, look, it's 3.7 times. This is according to um, something that Goldman Sachs put out. It's 3.7 3 times, 3 times more volatile than gold. The coin, yes. Bitcoin than yeah. gold over the last three or four years. Yeah. That's pretty obvious. I just wonder if that is too much volatility, too much pressure for it to get real inflows into it, like real money. Like, are you putting in 20 grand at a time? I think a lot of traders are put dripping into it. Maybe they have a buy every month or they're buying it when it dips and maybe they're buying it when it breaks out. I just don't know if it's, 
it's too volatile to get real money in there and people are going to please add us and put comments because there's going to be a lot of investors in here that are going to disagree with that. Yeah. But until Bitcoin really has a dramatic pullback, I want to see where that bottom is, Brennan, because some of these wicks are pretty violent. Like today, we wick down to, I mean, it's showing down here on Binance, down to 65,000 today yeah. Yeah, when the early. high is 72,000. Yeah, that was early on. You know, and then we had a wick back here on what day was this? Uh, the 4th of March. We had a high of 68 and a low all the way down to 59. It's just, that's, that's big. You know, and it's like a stock, you know, $68 down to 59. There's some big movements here and we've seen Coinbase do the same thing. So I feel like this dude that's taking our picture right now, Fabian, it's more younger generation interested in Bitcoin. And as that wealth starts to accumulate, like, let's talk about this here. All right, <laughs> we're gonna get a lot Hey, what's up? I, I'm, tell, my tell name me, is Sean, Sean right now. Uh, Sean Catina, find me at Trader TV. Sean, you find us everywhere all the time. But Brendan, you know, we're going to have a huge transfer of wealth because the population's aging out, and a lot of that that population has a lot of money, as you the know. The biggest ever. So I fact. just wonder that when the younger population gets some of this money handed back down, whether or not through the will or however it is, and they have to now start to deal with it. You're taking a lot of pictures there. The guy's bro. got a really loud Is it paparazzi like, up in here it's, right it's, now it's or what? a very loud shutter. On but this but my idea is this. Oh, it'd be cool if you heard it. I think that, that sounds nice. Like we're on the red carpet here. Right. But the idea is this. As transfer of wealth comes through, I wonder if that, if I all of a sudden had like, oh, okay, here's $100,000 that, you know, that's passed down. Yeah. What part of that investment would I put into crypto? Yeah. I still think we would go the 5 or 10%. But the older generation, my father would never put 5 or 10% no. into that at all. So I actually think that there's a huge tailwind coming with new capital. It just got to get into the hands of the younger. Then it will push into crypto. We've seen Solana, by the way, is absolutely mooning. It's altcoin season with Solana, up 35% this week. Crazy that we're even back here again. We had, this, we had this whole conversation going back to you know, COVID or pre-COVID, but um, I, I want to I get your take on, on an idea that I had today that is, is kind of interesting from the standpoint of a trader. And you kind of alluded to this, that mm. we have these ETFs now to trade on an intraday basis. There was a lot of intraday trading going on in crypto itself uh, during the more volatile periods. How much of that volume and how much of that trading activity has now transferred back into the actual stock market via these ETFs? Because as you said, tons of liquidity, tons of volatility, and tons of opportunity in these ETFs as a result. I mean, even today, I just looked at IBIT right here, um, and it is 1.86 times relative volume today. So even today, you're at two times relative volume. So we are starting to see some huge increases in, I don't have volume up here, but I just think as it looks more and more like these charts, I'm, I'm excited for these ETFs. And we talked about this, Brendan, I just think it's so easy now yeah. to buy Bitcoin and not even worry about the actual coin itself. No more Web3 wallets, no more Dapper or anything yeah. like that. It's straight in. It's straight into your 401k or IRA or wherever, and you can buy one of these ETFs. I just think it makes it so easy. And we wait for the Ethereum ETF. All right, we're going to get to... Uh, You're my... in some of these ETFs, or no? Are you out of Bitcoin? Uh, the ones or? in, in Toronto. In the Canadian here. ones. Yeah. Right, right, right. And by the way, Canada was the first country yeah. to do this. Yeah, that, that was... Same as marijuana. Three, and that, four I wish years we ago? We got those? I feel like it might have like been... That? You know, it's funny because you mentioned that, because um, I remember when we first got to them, it was near the highs. Yeah. Because I remember looking back at my account when it was all the way, when Bitcoin had tanked, I'm like, how am I long this? And I'm out of the money like 50%. Oh my God, my average price. Is I know. It's so like bad. we're just getting back into the money now. So bad. Um, we're going to talk about MicroStrategy coming up here. but Oh, good. Um, I, I mean, there was this JP Morgan note. We can touch on that maybe first, but... Um, JP Morgan suggesting that the inflows to both gold and Bitcoin, everyone you know, suggesting the simple fact that uh, Bitcoin is going to become a store of value and an investment tool from that standpoint. Uh, JP Morgan suggesting that it's not there yet when it right. comes to the amount going into Bitcoin versus gold, but it's basically neck and neck. I actually saw an article that made the argument the other way, that if you consider the value mm -hmm. of the actual holdings it's already past gold has it um i don't know bitcoin's uh, bitcoin's market cap i think was 1.7 or 8 I, i'm trillion. just talking about the the Crypto. investment holdings oh, into, like for long term investment right, like gld like a store or, of value type yeah. idea on on btc i don't know i mean do you see any value really in in holding gold i i, I just 
Not until a month ago. When yeah, and then now it's finally yeah. starting to break yeah. out. I think that gold is, is, is had its had its run, and it, and it continues to go higher, right? I mean, as people start to get a little nervous about where the, the stock market is, and you take some of the profits that you've had and you put it into something that's yeah. generally known as a, sa a flight to safety, and that's going to be gold. But look at gold here on the weekly chart. This is why I think we're getting more inflows into gold, because it's looking a lot like... You know, some of these other ETFs like we've seen, the XBI or IWM trying to break out right now, or the Dow, uh, Dow Jones uh, 30 there, the DIAs, the diamonds starting to go up to the upside. Gold breaks out and it gets everybody's attention. I mean, we've had guys like Michael Noss on here wants yeah. to talk about gold. Brian Shannon, some of the guests that we've had on the show all want to talk about gold, and it's because it's the hot thing right now. I, I like it as an investment. I've never been involved. For me, I'd rather buy something like a gold miner, like a Barrick Gold, right. that will give us 2 or 3% dividend and set of just waiting on gold, but hey, you got to put your profits somewhere, and I don't have a problem with it in gold, but like I said, I think it's an older generation game, and Fabian, you going to ever invest in gold? What's, what's gold? Yeah, he didn't even know what it was. Um, this, this kind of visualizes exactly what we're talking about. I mean, this is just GLD, and this is all well, 11 okay. spot ETFs, so GLD versus all 11 spot ETFs. But they took it over, so, so exactly. it's high. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, which is, you know, like the argument here, it's, it's already But the happened. GLD is only one, so the GLD is just one, one thing. We have GDX, exactly. and there's many different yeah. other ways. GDX, the miners. And you can, involve, you can buy spot gold, just like you could yeah. Bitcoin as well, and there's different, different avenues for that. But I think it's interesting. The only problem with all of this is the fees that you're gonna pay on that side, and most of them are about you know half to one percent. Some of them have fee holidays for right now, but they will get get added on, and that will affect the price movement of uh, your ETF in that way. So you do pay a little bit for that, but yeah, I think it's I worth it. I don't know. Do you buy the dip on Bitcoin? Way up here. I still want. Uh, no. Yeah. I'm already in Bitcoin. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. A lot of people are going to be sitting here going, "Do I add? Do I add? Do I add? Well, do I add? Do I add now?" You want to actually? We looked at we looked at the chart there. I can give my. Oh no, uh, I think I closed it. That's okay. No, oh, I did not. Uh, okay, so here's, <laughs> that was pretty dramatic on that. But here, if you're looking right now and you're on the podcast with us, Brendan, I've always said this area. Remember when we were a couple weeks ago on the podcast, we talked about this 50 area, holding goes all the way back to 2019, held that level, finally broke out. So just like gold, here's the kind of the breakout that we were talking about. And then here's the final breakout to the upside. So whenever you get a parabolic move, you could put Fibonacci retracements on here, so on and so forth. But I would think, honestly, just looking at this, a push back into this area, 45, I think is where you want to buy. And I wouldn't be surprised if you buy something in and around 50. This is a weekly chart, 45.50, you dip buy into that. But I think the same kind of thing. If it breaks down through 40, then you probably leg into 25.30 yeah. again. Yeah. So take it like a stock and trade it accordingly, and uh, I think you'll be okay with Bitcoin. Yeah, those moving averages are... But there's that halving crazy. event, so we got to figure out that. That's coming up in April. Yeah, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know how that's going to react. We did have... I think it was, was it Brian on it? Or no, it was Chris Bretcher talked about uh, the miners got hit about 50% the last couple times uh, we've had this. That's a good point. So that's why it's interesting to look at Mara as well. Yeah, so we'll keep that in mind coming up in uh, April. There's a ton coming in, in the next coming weeks and months. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, let's go to the Fed here because we got a lot this week in the way of inflation data. If you remember going back to Fed Chair Powell's two days in Washington last week, the overall message that we heard was, we need more data, we need more data, we need more data, we need more data to be comfortable in a rate cut. And now we get a week's full, and then you can tag on the non-farm payrolls number that came last Friday, or a week ago Friday, uh, that was also, um, I mean, it was kind of in line with expectations, but we get a week of data now that's inflation related, that's all hotter than expected. CPI was the most, tame, if you will, uh, data point that we got this week, basically flat, no change whatsoever. This is just highlighting the amount of time that we've spent above 3% on a seasonally adjusted, going all the way back to 1948, which is crazy. This is the 80s. 128. So this is, this is uh, 1989, 1990. Executive months above 3%. 35 we are That's now. That's a lot, no? 35 months above 3%. I thought I read something that the average uh, inflation rate is in the between 3 and 4%, averaged out over like the last 60 years or something like that. So I feel like we're comfortable at that spot. 
And that's, I think, the underlying issue here and the overall point. I mean, we had 500 straight basis points to the upside trying to control inflation. Yeah. They bring it back down. They don't move that number. Yeah. Still added that, that all those increases are still in the market right yeah. now. At some point, they're going to have to come back because it's affecting, in my opinion, it's going to start affecting the home. You know, the, we, we just saw that from Zillow. There was news today. Uh, controver not controversy, but a fee issue there with some of the real estate. I don't think that's a big Fed issue by any stretch of the imagination. But at some point, they're going to have to come down. I feel like this market is really heated up. They're not supposed yeah. to look at the stock market. But are we going to eventually stop buying things? Do people stop buying new cars? Like I know. Yeah, but really when does it stop? Like and I, I keep pointing to the jobs. I, I think they're going to have, have to do something here in, in a way that is not going to be favorable to not only the market, but to um, investors and to consumers across the board. Because and we were talking to Frank again this week on the show about this. The market, the stock market specifically, is getting comfortable. I and mean, we're at all time highs. Mm -hmm. Is right. getting comfortable with 3% inflation. But yet they're still pounding the table on 2% is our target. We're going to get this to 2%. How they do that Nobody knows. at this point is, is a huge well, We saw 60% of that number uh, was shelter and gas. Yeah. And we've talked about that. They, they can't control that. It's the, it's the same old, same old. Like it just continues. It's going to get a lot higher. If there's, honestly, and we, all, we also have the, this election year. Yeah. So as you know, China gets going again, if that economy doesn't heat up, I guess that'll be good for oil because then there's less production happening. You showed bad that, for the economy. You showed that chart today on the on the show of population growth. Yeah. And China's actually Okay, but do you know what I thought about when I thought about that? Yeah, so China was like the only huge nation, I don't want to say G7 nation, but you know, large nation that had a declining population. But the problem is then we have to believe the numbers that are coming out of China. But that's bad for the overall But do we believe those numbers? I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know where to, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll talk about so much stuff out there right now. We have ADRs on our list here with the, a, a CPI from China. Um, that was, that was, yeah. A I CPI about, from I China actually want to talk about that as well. well. That was not good either. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look great as far as that economy is concerned. But um, the big point here, uh, FOMC meeting next week. Right. So this is the March meeting. Remember, we sat here in January and, and we said, thought it was sixty something at least. Yeah, yeah. that we're going to get half a point worth of right. a now coming it's up. Zero. In, what is the odds? In zero, March, right? It's zero. It's ninety nine point nine. I think uh, that nothing's going to happen. But as a trader, we want some action here. We can't just keep coming out as expected. Ninety nine percent. Nothing's going to happen. Oh man! But we are going to get the first economic projections from oh, the, yeah, the dot plot back and another version of the dot plot. So we get um, to see where they plot those <coughs> dots finally. The, the ever exciting dot plot. Yeah, uh, you see Fabian, he's so excited over there. This will give us an indication of what has changed since December. The last one we got was back in December, and that was the one that said we're gonna get as many as six rate cuts coming up this year. I know, it's not um, crazy. Now it's looking like we might not even- The market's overjumped that, right? Because it was, it was a lot of us that were thinking that we are gonna get six, seven, something rate crazy. cuts. Crazy, yeah. And it doesn't look yeah. like we, we may, do you think there's a chance we get none? I don't think that's possible. I think something something what is about going if oil that does come down and housing. Something's going to have to change. Exactly. Yeah, like something is going to have to change, to change to for them that. to be able to cut. Here's my question, though. Another Considering question. all of this, we go to um, we go to next week. We get the we get the Fed. Fed Chair Powell comes out, stands behind the microphone, and says, "We need more data. We need more data." He's going to say the same thing because what else? Always does. Say? The market just doesn't continues care. to go up. Yep. Does this even matter anymore? Nope. Because it doesn't really seem Does like it. it. Uh, no. No, I mean, the Fed just keeps rolling guys out. They, yeah. um, you know, some of this Fed speak just keeps on happening. And they're like, we're looking at employment. We're looking at CPI readings, uh, core, you know, PPI coming through. And they all came hotter. So they all came hotter than expected. So they actually can just sit on their hands yeah. and say, it's, it's heating up again. We better not cut these rates or else it's going to just march yeah. back up. People are going to start spending more money, creating a bigger inflation problem. And then we go back up to the upside. But I keep saying the same thing every podcast. I mean, here it comes again. I, this is from Challenger. I don't know. Um, we just saw here, U.S.-based employers announced almost 85,000 85, job cuts, not dollars. The number, 85,000 worth of cuts in February, yeah. up 3% from one month prior. There's also stats back here. 
look at this. I wanna, th this is what the from Challenger, Andrew uh, Challenger from this group said. As we navigate the start of 2024, we're witnessing a persistent wave of layoffs. Businesses are aggressively slashing costs and embracing technological innovations, actions that are significantly reshaping staffing needs. So right there, talked about it, uh, aggressively slashing costs and embracing technological yeah. innovations, which to me is that AI thing. And if employers are embracing that- AI thing. <laughs> something about AI, I don't know. We, maybe we could talk about that. There's a couple stocks out there moving around. But no, we <laughs> talked about that. That's the worry right there, yeah. right? I mean, ultimately, will there be any Uber drivers left? Yeah. You know, if that becomes automated, now we're well, well down, that's maybe jumping the, the gun there. Story. But as we go, uh, I did write something down, and we do, we do have it even. I'm going to talk about even a stock like Nike because they have earnings coming up. So when you ask me about that, they laid off 1,200 yeah. uh, 1,200 people in the last month as well. Yeah. So it's hitting not just tech side of things; it's even hitting retail. And as people get, as companies get more efficient, pe people are going to lose their jobs, and it yeah. does suck to ha have to say that. Yeah. But unfortunately, when the times are good, a lot of these companies hired a lot, and now it's just coming right back in. So shout out to the Challenger report there about all those job cuts. Uh, IBM was another one this week that we heard from. Um, yeah, they not only they laid hard, off too. in marketing and advertising, but then they also said that AI was going to allow them to get rid of up to 5,000 more jobs before 2026. So is this... We should have known when we were watching Jeopardy. Do you remember, what was that guy? Oh, Einstein, not Einstein, that's, uh, what was the Jeopardy? IBM Alex built. Trebek? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, the host was Alex. I, no, I was like, where are you going? Uh, with this? Shout out to Canada, by the way. Thunder yeah. Bay, I think, Alex Trebek. Preston what was it called? No, no, uh, man. They. Um, it was. Uh, Einstein. And it uh, ended up winning. I know exactly what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, it, uh, it went, on, went on Jeopardy and faced like Ken Jennings and all that. And ended up winning, I think, didn't it? I don't know. I, I, I think I, it did. I don't think it was close. Uh, Watson. Watson, that was it. Yeah, uh, IBM really Watch is a computer system capable of answering questions posed in a natural language. So this was introduced, guess what year? 2010. So now we're, you know, 14 years what's down. What's up now, NVIDIA? Yeah, what's up now, <laughs> IBM? And IBM was, but anyways, just to go show you, that was pretty fun back then. Yeah, yeah Ken Jennings, here it is right here. I have some pictures. Uh, all right, yeah, look at this, Watson. Uh, here, look at $5,000 for Watson here. Brad had also 5000 What the, look at this picture for Watson. 77000 Crushing. When it made this Jennings dude look silly at 24, Watson crushing That's gotta be everybody in jeopardy right now. Shout out to IBM and holding that I have as well. I like that stock. But, but as you were saying, you know, is this, like are these job cuts related to AI specifically or all the, are these job cuts front running mm -hmm. an economic slowdown. Economic slowdown? I don't know if we're gonna slow down economically, no. I would say it's just front running. Uh, companies' decisions, because I feel like when you invest a lot of money into AI, you have to make it back somewhere, and unfortunately it's gonna be in the HR department. I know you have a few things on MicroStrategy here. So um, oh. this is the, I wanted to show this real quick. I was quick. wondering if we were gonna to get to that. I wanted to go back. This is the weekly chart yeah, of uh, MSDR. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what it's I It's just, it's madness. Absolute madness and volume accelerating at the highs here for uh, MicroStrategy. There's, um, do you have that chart? I'll, I'll grab it, go ahead. I, I wanna grab that chart of MicroStrategy versus Bitcoin. Because sure, do it's, that. it's basically the same thing at this point. Okay, so just so everybody understands what's happening with MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is not even really a company that does anything other than buy Bitcoins, okay? so. The thing about MicroStrategy and why it's up so much, and we'll wait to see the relationship between Bitcoin and MicroStrategy. Thing is, is that just in the last two weeks, it's gone from $670, $700 in the last three weeks up to 1.7K. So it has gone up about 130% or so in three weeks. That's not what Bitcoin's done at all. And the reason why they can do this is because they're acquiring Bitcoin through debt financing. So imagine that, all right? Right now, they're dropping out debt. So they're offering, they're having an offering out there and they're raising $800 million. What they're doing is gonna pay four or 5% on that $800 million, Brendan. But instead, they're dropping all of that $800 million into Bitcoin. Yeah. So they're saying, we'll pay you 4%, whoever wants some of these notes. Yeah. And then we're just gonna drop that money into Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin goes up 5%, They've now just made tons of, they're never gonna, that 4% has already paid off yeah. in one little some. move. And yeah. then now they're holding the underlying Bitcoin. So 
Unfortunately, I have a story to tell about MicroStrategy, and I have a feeling it's not going to end well. Because if Bitcoin cranks lower, then the next thing you know, this thing is going to drop like a rock. Not yeah. like an SMCI rock, but like a monster down to the downside here. Because all of a sudden, if they're out of the money on some of those coins that they've bought, they're going to have to either sell some of their positions to raise some cash to pay off some of those convertible notes or they're gonna let Bitcoin continue to ride up and the relationship's just gonna get going. It had two, two times relative volume today. Let's see that chart, Brendan. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can show that. I was just reading as well, um, as of March 11th, 2024, this is from bitcointreasuries.com. As of March 11th, 2024, their average price is 33.7-ish. Mm -hmm. MicroStrategy. What is that chart saying though? Uh, Bitcoin versus It's just a price relation. Pure price rel uh, relation. Right, red is Bitcoin. Yeah. So. It's just highlighting the the symmetry. Yeah, just the, oh, oh, the symmetry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wanted to see the relationship on, because Bitcoin over the last week, so if we look at iBit over the last week, it's gone, so for three weeks, it's gone from 30 to 40 bucks. So iBit's gone from 30 to 40 bucks in three weeks, right? So MST, MSTR, uh, in that same three week period has gone from 690. So iBit went from 30 to 40, so it went up a third, Yeah. right? These guys went up basically, so 700, double that is 1400, then add another six or 700 or so 400 nice. onto that up to 18. So mm -hmm. MSTR definitely outpacing. So look, I think you could, I mean, if you want to buy calls on Bitcoin, just buy some kind of a $2,000 call or something on MSTR. When Bitcoin hits $80,000, MSTR will be at 2,500 and you'll be laughing. Agreed. Uh, financial advice. You hinted at this, but let's get into uh, what happened at the close tonight. Uh, again, we're recording this on Friday. Happy weekend to everyone. Hit the like, hit the subscribe and leave a comment or a question. I want to see some more comments. Yeah. Like last week, the comments were like, oh, where do we think NVIDIA is going or something like that? But last week, do you want me to ask Brendan a question or do you want to know something about Fabian or Ramin or um, some, some inside notes about Sharif? Or What's your favorite hot dog restaurant in Toronto? Street meat. I don't really know any hot. <laughs> I don't even know any hot. Do you know any hot dogs? There's one on... Uh, oh, you talked about one last... Was it you? One on King Street. Worst. Yeah. Worst. It's horrible. Yeah. The reason why, I don't remember the last time I actually paid for a hot dog other than just like the store. My and wife and I went there. Doing them myself. Yeah. My wife and I went there one time for lunch and it was like $100. We had hot dogs. $100. We had a beer or something. We both had like one drink. One drink, yeah. Hot dog. Like, really? So I would just say, honestly, hot dogs have a place at sporting events. And then if you're really on the run, yeah. like we'll do that. Like tomorrow we have a lot of hockey. So for lunch, we'll either grab, just go to the bakery and grab some meat or we may, the kids may request hot dogs. So we'll, we can have that, which is hot dog meat. Uh, okay. What I wanted Mystery to- meat? Oh, on that note, you know what I was thinking? St. Patrick's that's Day. That's dangerous. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. I, doesn't, I don't think that often. I just blurt <laughs> things out before I think, which is the problem, right? So, which is why I make notes okay. on what I'm going to ask you. Tell me about St. Patrick's Day. Well, obviously, it's going to be a big day for you because you're a Guinness fan. Wait, so are you Irish? Am I Irish? Yeah, I'm Irish. Yeah, that's right. Just only on St. Patrick's Day. Do I spell my name S-E-A-N? I am Irish. Hi. Okay. Hey, Brennan, the Irish guy. You do anything Irish? I, I'm like third, what do you do that's I'm Irish? I'm like a third Irish. Does that like, mean like third generation? Isn't that funny? Because in Canada, I know in the people in the United States, they say they're very, very patriotic and they'll be, I'm American, yeah. you know, I'm American. Yeah. Basically, nobody says they're Canadian. Do you realize that? I do. Do you? I'm as Canadian. You just said as, I'm Irish. No, but I'm as Canadian as it gets. I'm like, th like three generations worth of. But if someone said to you, what's your national, I guess nationality, Canadian. even, even I'd be like, I'm Italian. Like people say that I, stuff. I've, no, I, I, I've just been to Italy my for My wife is Greek. She says, she says she's Greek all right. the time. Uh, no, I, I get You know what I'm I saying? I feel like that's true of Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, people will say that even what? though they have their, their landed citizenship or something like that, they, they will always say they're. Yeah. You know, South I'm, Asian. I'm like English, Irish, and Dutch. Cool but you, mix. But you gotta go. You gotta That's go a good drinking mix. Back Holy crap. Way. Right? English, right? Irish, and Dutch? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no wonder you're a beer guy. Uh, but that has nothing to do with the question I was gonna ask you. Green beer? No, pass. Hard pass. You're getting closer. Okay. I was gonna ask you about something that's really popular at this time of, uh, time of year, and it's the Shamrock Shake from McDonald's. They're back. Oh. I was gonna say, what the hell is that? You don't know what a shamrock shake is? 
Ramin, do you know what a shamrock shake is? Is this a good time to use the mic, Ramin? Ramin, do you know what? Fabian, do you know what? Just to, just to fly Why are the they not? Bridge. You know, they have no problem saying stuff in our ear or anything, no. but just to hear her voice, impossible. Talk I can't ask for her opinion on a shamrock all shake. The time. Give me your opinions in the chat. I think it's a funny story because um, we, I got married April 2nd. Okay. So it was close to um, St. Patrick's Day. April Fool's Day. So when my wife had her bachelorette party, April Fool's Day, I was going to put that. It's a good thing April Fool's wasn't the Saturday because we got married on a Saturday. That would have been hilarious. I'd be psych. April Fool's I'm out of here. No. Um, so my wife, apparently all of them, they went up and, uh, and actually Neil's uh, wife was there as well oh, nice. at the bachelorette party. They went up to your neck of the woods in Collingwood. Okay. And then I guess all of them on the way home or something like that, they were hung over, et cetera, et cetera. And they had shamrock shakes. And Marissa said she never threw up more in her life oh, because it was like a rough weekend. Oh, and then they had shamrock shake and she could never have one again. Is it, like what is, it's green soft serve? I think it's mint, isn't it? No, it's just, a, yeah, yeah. Like soft serve. Yeah, it's like yeah, a chocolate yeah. shake, but there's some... I now have to look it up. Okay. I shouldn't have brought it up if I didn't know the exact ingredients. I'll bring it back to the market. God forbid here. our that? staff over there looks it up for us. Yeah, and never lets us know. There we go. Our crack Hi. producer. If you're on air, you can see them you now. Can, Wait. Okay, they're not even waving anymore. No. Uh, <laughs> it care. sucks. The shamrock shake sucks. It's minty and. Uh, minty, all that's it is. what it is. That's all it is. It's just yeah, non stop okay. mint. <laughs> As I said, pass. Are, are you a mint ice cream guy? Uh, I am not. No. Actually, if it's really hot outside, yeah, chocolate mint. Uh, is it a but it's just thing? straight up like green mint? No. Klondike bars are good, yeah. You like those? Yeah. <laughs> Klondike bars, why not? That's like the chocolate with that. It's like a soft more? serve, yeah, like a soft serve surrounded with chocolate. Isn't that what it is? I don't know. We're getting a little off pace here. It was 18. Wendy's Frosties, it was 18 I like. 18 degrees Celsius in Toronto this week in March, so I rightfully feel boiling so. wearing this sweater here. Today. Uh, I thought I put some merch up on this screen. Let's bring it back to the market here. Um, Why? Though? We got, uh, I, know, I have no idea. All right, let's um, do this. S&P uh, inclusions happened Friday at the uh, close. Ends up being super boring. Um, super micro, super, super boring. Super micro was super boring. No, it was really negative. I, I mean, we, last episode, we talked through the mechanics of this trade. Mm. And yeah. it was two and a half million shares that needed to be bought. Bought. The imbalance came out, I think a small sell. It was like 100,000 or something like that. Neil shot by the show, I think yeah, maybe 200,000. And it's it nothing like the got same. absolutely crushed. Into yeah, the here's market. the chart right here. Look at this, nasty move to the downside. This is often what happens, man. We talked about this. Look at the shiny thing, and then next thing you know, it goes to the downside. So super micro, if you're not watching right here, uh, at three o'clock, we're at 1.14. So with $1,140, and to Brendan's point, we just tanked. Um, right here at 350 when the imbalances came out, um, it was not what anyone expected. So we were at 1.14. At that point, we were down only $30 to 1.1. Then all of a sudden, those imbalances came, Brendan. Everyone was expecting a huge bid. And quite frank, everyone on the floor was the same way. Neil and yeah. I were the same way. Yeah. We had our bid set up. I was making sure I had the right keys set up and everything. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it came out a small sell or buy. Anyways, it was not what was expected. And we just went down immediately in one minute and it's not that dramatic but it's still 20 bucks so you got a thousand shares there that's 20 grand thank you very much bye bye. Um, and then at the end of the day we come right into the close and hit down near a thousand dollars and 70 cents so about a hundred and or seventy dollars about a hundred and thirty dollars to the downside there in the last hour when everyone was expecting a bump nuts absolutely nuts. but you know what it goes to show you that that was done already Oh, because oh, it was yes, announced 100%. live on the show. Yeah. Remember, you're like, yeah. SMCI and Deckers are Why now are like, they merging together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, they're putting like chips and shoes. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. Uh, but not no, the case. no, not the case. So SMCI, I still think it's a nice little trade there. But again, short float of 9%. Yeah. We'll see what happens. 55 million shares. For anyone who's wondering, uh, what does this all mean? Um, anything that follows the index, anything that uh, tracks the S&P 500, they have to weight their position in the individual name accordingly uh, at the as of the close tonight or as of the open on Monday. So Decker's goes in as well. I don't, I don't even think anyone is paying about attention Deckers. to Deck at the close today. Like, I don't even hear Dude, we've talked talking. about this, and I don't think we talked about it once. No. Like, we just say on the show, we're like, no. okay, so Decker's and SMCI. Okay, let's look at the SMCI chart. Yeah. You know, let's look at the Decker's chart. But here's why. Just come back here for a sec, Ramin. Here's why. Did the same thing at the close. $60 billion versus basically nothing. Like Whirlpool came out, Zion came out. They're both $6 billion, $23.7 billion. Uh, SMCI, by far the biggest. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, Decker's the chart in the, over the last week pretty much looks the same as SMCI. We yeah. get a nice little bump up. We hover around here. And if you look at what happened today, Brendan, the exact same thing. So here's 3 o'clock for Decker's. It was 9.23 and change. Uh, it closes at 9.10. Like, I mean, straight down. Yeah. Straight down what on what should have been that? a bid. Yeah, this is just a chart. Not too much volume. Today's volume. Actually, today was $6 million, but I believe, what was it at the close? You said $20 million or... or what it was, was two the and a, it shares? was two and a half million to buy. Okay, they so, needed to buy. Right. But at that time I looked and they had already done like five million on the day. Yeah, so I actually I wanted to show you this up yeah. here in the top right. It's relative volume today was 27 times. So that's high. So that's high. So that's but, something that you want to look at when you're looking at this. And uh, it was just basically faded all day, man. All day. Moral of the all story. All day down. No one ever trades deckers. Let's or talk. moral of the story, go the other way when everyone's looking one way. Yeah. Honestly. It's getting to that point. It's I mean, like, I why said, do you think Bitcoin's having a hard time up here? Because everyone's seeing it at highs, yeah. and they're nervous to buy the yeah. highs, so they'd rather sell yeah. and get nervous hands dumping their shares, or their coins in this case, to be able to pick it up. So that's what I think anyways, but I've been wrong before. Completely Shout out right. to my wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm Evans. I'm wrong all the time. Hi, Marissa. Uh, Instagram and uh, Ooh, this was a good TikTok. One. Yep. This is actually, I was surprised by this. This is uh, worldwide downloads. You surprised by this? Um, I hate, I shouldn't say I hate TikTok. I never used it. No, but Instagram's higher. No, I know. So that's why I'm not, that's what I was going to say. I'm not really surprised. Yeah. The thing is, By I hear people like Sharif, who, you know, this will be a, See, no, no, hold on. Be a test oh, if Sharif listens to this. This one. is, this is, this what? is Ramin, exactly what we're talking about. What did she we, say? She said by 200 million, though, isn't it? Instagram or what is it? was higher, <laughs> right? Oh, she's like champion TikTok. But Look, this is I what don't. We were saying before we came, like, started recording. They have all these great comments, but they never want to actually say right. them on. Are they the actually microphone. using the mic this time? I no. know my guy was talking about no. mint. No. Fabian is okay. Yeah. She's still shy. No. You know what? She's probably waiting out for more money. Like I ain't speaking until we put this in my contract. <laughs> which, by the way, I need to rework mine. No, I don't. My only thing about TikTok is. Is, is that it's controlled by the Chinese government. They Wait, track it is? where, yeah. yeah, they track where, like on Ramin's phone right now, <laughs> the Chinese government can see every single thing that she's interested in, where she's located, and all that stuff. And you know what? If you want the Chinese government to put whatever algorithm they want in front of your face, then that's cool. You can download TikTok. I, I feel like this free market, and honestly, I don't take a side on this. Yeah. As long as you know that's what's happening. If there's ever a problem with Instagram, they can subpoena Meta and get all of that data. They can shut it down. They can do whatever they want with it, okay? Because that's the way it works. Yeah. They can't do anything with this data from China. So now, all of a sudden, they're gathering these Chinese companies and the Chinese government, which is what, number one? I mean, I don't want to talk about enemy or not. But if there's someone to be worried about as far as infrastructure and taking over the world, I would say the U.S. probably is already in that spot. But to ever be dethroned, it might be China. Why do you think we're limiting the powers of these chips? You know, so we should limit what information we give to the China. Okay, listen to this, Brendan. All right. Why is it not, why is it not a double-sided? But it is, though. No, it's not. China bans. But that's what I'm saying. Right. Like so Facebook, we should just ban it. Instagram. Yeah. Why is yes, China I, allowed no, to say no YouTube shorts? Yeah. But here we have people like Sharif and Ramin that are like, don't take my TikTok away. But in China, they're like, no, no, no. You cannot see Facebook or China. I don't know why I'm changing my vote tone there. But it's a dictatorship. That's what, that's what China Exactly. So did you just say that live? You should have. I like that. I don't have it in my ear. I can hear what you're saying. No, but I just feel like, why do we here in North America have to be like, oh, we're all free market. Anyone should get whatever they want. But in China, we can't even show them how yeah. good of a show Trader TV Live is. Completely agree. Completely so, agree. Uh, you take it like that, whatever it is. It's all about money, baby. One thing to consider here. Um, Are you part of the Steve Mnuchin bit? <laughs> No. No, okay. Everyone else is, but... Right, you talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, they were interviewing somebody on CNBC tonight that wasn't interested in buying TikTok. Is that Elon Musk? Because so many other people are that they're trying to find people who aren't uh, at this point. Um, How good is that for Meta, though? Like, I just read a stat right here. Uh, 
Instagram's total or Meta's total app downloads period, so I guess that would be WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook, yeah. grew over 20% year over year. Did you hear what Trump said, though? Did I hear what Trump said? What did I, what, what this time? About Meta and oh, Facebook. Oh, he was saying, he was calling them bad now, right? Yeah, that they're like the downfall of. So I was also reading something. People think that there's some money exchanging hands here, and we're not, I know it's a podcast, maybe we could say something a little bit more, but yeah. Steve Mnuchin's trying to buy yeah. TikTok, former Finance Trump secretary, advisor, I yeah. believe. No, I thought he actually held some. He did have a, a position. No, but <laughs> yeah. he's an advisor too. So let's hold off on negative talk here about my boy Meta. On that, uh, Trump officially becomes the Republican nominee on Monday. They're going to say president, or is that we have to wait for November? There's no chance this gets through the Senate. Yes, the House passed it. There's no chance this gets through the, the Senate. Have they said that already? I thought this was a pretty much a bipartisan No, situation. I'm saying that right now. Oh. I thought it was, they, I thought no, it was were... passed in the House. House, I know. It's going to go to the Senate. <laughs> Trump said on, uh, maybe it almost fell off his chair. Yeah, because he was running to go get a shamrock shake. Um, Trump said on Monday that he would not ban TikTok, even though he was the one that actually started this, if you remember back to his uh, presidency. Divest. Um, now that Biden wants to do it. Anyways, it's not going to get through the Senate. No, I don't think this is, a, I think this is a political thing. It's an election year, so Agreed. something to talk about. And uh, President Trump likes talking about this, national security, and so does the current president. Yeah. Um, and why not just it's, push, it, I, push it down? Just you, keep pushing it, pushing it. Yeah. Eventually, I, I think it gets done, actually. I think ByteDance just honestly says, if someone wants to pay us, We'll figure out, I don't know how they figure out a price, yeah. but if they can come up with something, why not just say, you know what, let's just take this and, and go. There's so many different angles to this because as you said, how do you trust what's coming out of China? So if they sell off just the, what, North American That's it. data chunk of, of TikTok, do we just trust them the, when they say, here you go? Did you guys get that? Brennan did the two thumbs up. That was great. That needs to be on the... You guys put stupid, <laughs> dumbass things of me on the thumbnail, and we just got that? Okay, the danger that I have with all of this talk is, um, this is just North America. Like, I guess it would just be United States. I assume Canada. Like, Trudeau would we're just be like, on, whatever, no, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, we're going to fall. But on. the other decision would be then, I think it sets precedent for Europe. Yes. So then all of a sudden the EU probably bans TikTok. So I think that ByteDance has to figure something out right now because if the United States jumps and forces their hand, they probably don't get the same deal. And then eventually, if President Trump or Biden come November decide to make a move on it, they could technically ban the whole thing. I just don't think it's fair that we, we can't show YouTube and our program in China Nothing. yet we show whatever they tell us to show. Okay, Kevin O'Leary's gonna buy it, and then he's gonna come on the show and talk about it. Yeah, good, perfect. Yeah, we'll have Kevin O'Leary on. Don't we'll forget do to hit the like and the subscribe. No, there was, there was Let us Fox, know who you want as it was, guests. It was a Fox Business article. Sharif was questioning me on this. It was a Fox Business article that- Yeah, he's probably that, part of that something. That said that, he, he was a yeah. part of- You know be hilarious if part. all of a sudden you're watching Shark Tank and like some dude from Bite Dance comes out? <laughs> You know, we have this. He's great like, how much app. do you want? He's like, four trillion dollars. <laughs> he's like, you might have Sold. heard of this. It's TikTok. Yeah. And then everyone's like, huh? All right, we beat this. And then they're like, oh, we got to, you know, give you a way worse price. <laughs> yeah. I, do you never watch Shark Tank, by the way? I used to all the time. I I'm not trying to throw I shade at it. And I have to. Next time Kevin O'Leary's here, I'm going to ask him about it because yeah. I always feel like they always say, well, we can't, um, you know, we can't pay the valuation that you're asking. But how about this valuation? And I don't know. I know that it's tough to start a new business. And I feel like that's what we do best here in North America. Yeah. So I like that show, but sometimes I feel like the guys get a raw deal. But hey, it's a jumping spot for a lot of businesses. It's their choice too, right? That reminds me, last time he was here, I asked him about one of those um, outdoor uh, pizza ovens. Yeah. I forget the name of it now. Uh, is he in that? I know, yes, I know exactly it. the one you're talking Bertello, about. Bertello, is it? Uh, yeah, one of outdoor. Those. Okay, go the ahead. Has I'm a YouTube this. channel. Like the the chef that was a part of inventing that yeah. has a great YouTube channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That they cook the all kinds of nonsense in that um, oven. Anyway, um, let's talk about Boeing here because we're getting on in time already. Uh, another tough week for Boeing. This Bertello, is Bertello. That's right. Yeah, this is a weekly chart for Boeing. Uh, fair warning. Huge monster volume week to the downside there. On there. Uh, I mean, all kinds of stops getting hit here on the way down. We're through this gap. We're through, you know, that last huge green candle to the upside. The headlines that came out this week on, on Boeing are just absolutely insane. 
after this. Uh, first of all, the DOJ has launched a criminal investigation into That's this war popping out of this Alaska plane. And then on top of that, they fail all sorts of safety inspections. And the reasons behind them failing these inspections uh, were just madness. I mean, we joked about it at, at the beginning of this with uh, dish soap yeah. being used to lubricate uh, bolts. I mean, they were checking the seal on doors with apparently credit cards to see if they were actually sealed or not. I mean, could this get any crazier? We, we had talked about possibly buying Boeing against this 200 and holding it back down here to 175, but we didn't know. We thought that they'd only be using soap to clean planes. Not necessarily seal not the door. To, not to necessarily check for seals like, on the door. You know when you get a puncture in your tire and you put like a yeah. solute, like a right. soap solution? Right, right, and you find and you out where it bubbling. is. Yeah. Like, I like it as a, I mean, it's a cheap alternative to figure that stuff out. I just don't know if we should be doing that in planes that are hundreds of millions of dollars. And 30,000 feet off the ground. Right, with people in there. Exactly. And lives at risk. And it's, we kind of say that just jokingly, but I feel like at one, what point, Brendan, are we going to start to hear like, Lo, look, I'm seriously not traveling I because it's- I think already started. Nah, because you know what thing is, travel's really at all-time highs. We, I, I don't have no, any but, stats but, but to show you. But people are, if there's an option, yeah. choosing to go on the option, not the Boeing Problem plane. is there's no option, really. I there know. are for some, yeah. but I was just, I was, and again, I heard this this week, but I feel like American, we heard the CEO come out. I thought they said demand was basically at all-time highs. Yeah. So no one's turning down these flights. United, too. Because, because of anything to do with Boeing. But just looking at the chart... I think if you're not in it, you could buy some here, <laughs> but... But why? That's the thing. I mean, let's go to a weekly chart on Boeing. The thing is, for anybody that's looking, you go back down to those October bottoms. We're here right now at 180, and it's just been such a dramatic fall down. Uh, we were making fun of this kind of at 250. I feel like that's maybe when the story started because you had this huge gap, uh, probably an earnings play there, and then we just started gapping below. And the minute you're under a 200-period moving average, there's really no point to buy the stock. We've been waiting for Tesla yep. to get back going as well. We've bought Finally, we bought Apple once it broke a little bit above that point. Uh, and right now, I don't think Boeing's a buy, unfortunately until we get back into that 215 area. What, there's so many stocks to invest in right now. Yeah, why? 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 Just go with it's, the Dow Jones or something like that. Just real quick, this is just highlighting um, the last time there was a significant grounding for Boeing, the drop-off in deliveries year over year. Yeah, well, because they're not allowed to make them anymore. Exactly. So this was last year, 528. What are Ooh, we going to get? It got back going. Again. Yeah, like what are we going to get as a print here in 2024? So that's, that's forward-looking, but... It's, it's not going to be good. Anyways, I don't want to waste too much time on this because I think it's, it's well known and talked about. Have we lost, um, I was going to ask you this later on, but I'm just looking at it right now. Have we lost interest in golf? Like, do you notice the players this weekend? I feel like. I didn't even realize that. I feel like this whole separation has. Like, Rom isn't really there. All these it. big yeah. guys aren't there anymore. I agree. They've really ruined it. Yeah, I was going through Twitter and all of a sudden something came up about it. And I, I was watching it yesterday. And Shoffley was there. Roy McIlroy had a great day yesterday. Not so good today, it looks like. But. I mean, look, I'm not saying anything negative about go get paid. You used to be so excited about it. But now like, I don't even. All these players that have left, yeah. like go get paid. Cool. I, I, I get it. That. But the historic value of some of these term tournaments has just been destroyed. Because right. now there's no big right. name players there. People are just going wherever the money is. They'll play like the um, whatever. I don't know. Saudi Arabian Open or something. Whatever like they that. are. Just, I mean, they, because the pay is like $5 million it's per insane. or more yeah. than that. Yeah, it's insane. I, Anyways. And, and on that, I do actually like the model of the, the team aspect. And then the winner gets like to Oh, yeah, it's up fun. There's the, some fun it's things It's different, there. right? And they yeah. have to do something and different. You can draft right? your team and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. I don't like that they, and again, I'm down. Maybe I'm just being too like old man-ish, but like. Wearing shorts is fine, but sometimes they're like they're even allowed to wear gym shorts and like yeah. jogging pants. Yeah. I don't know, it's cool and everything like that, but here I am in a hoodie. But I mean, it's just I feel, anyways, a little yeah, off topic. No, there. I, no, I agree. I think the historic value of the players of you know all yeah, the majors, master. Like, I mean, they'll all be there for the masters, but maybe they won't. I don't. I don't know. Man. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to AI because there's a lot to um, talk about on uh, the AI front here. We'll start with Apple. Picking up this Darwin AI oh, yeah. Waterloo company. shout out. It was kind of it was kind of random. 
Thursday, what was it, midday or afternoon, early afternoon? This, this Did you ever read what, what, what exactly AI they're involved with? It's, so they, the AI they created, or part of the AI they created, can monitor products coming off a manufacturing line to look for faults. Okay. So I'm surprised Apple doesn't sort of have something like that. It, it sounds, and that's what I said to Sharif this morning, like it sounds like not very Apple-like, but I get it. They want to maybe expedite and streamline the manufacturing prox uh, process yep, yep. of iPhones and, and laptops and, and whatnot. But um, this deal apparently was done in February. And just finalized. And I guess just finalized and, yeah. and announced on, not a public on company, Thursday. Right? But it's the first major headline, I guess, from Apple on the AI front. Would you call it that? Was it? Yeah, well, major. Well, we got sort of a, didn't we get a headline that they are building? They they're, are yeah, expecting they're hard to at work or something, something like about that. Yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Why have we not heard too much about the Apple Vision Pro? Is that a little bit wondering? Seems to have fallen off. I feel off like if that has fizzled radar. a little bit. Yeah. I mean, apparently they sold. Uh, He's editing pictures uh, over there. 100,000 or something. Um, no. So. I like Apple because I really do think that some of the Chinese worries are maybe a little bit overblown and maybe we'll get to the CPI data in China, yeah, yeah. but it seems like they're starting to spend a little bit more now and I have some stats for that as well. Yeah. Uh, but again, with Apple, do, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, let's go. Or, okay. So um, I wrote down there, uh, and it's not on this page, of course, but oh, there it is right now. Yeah. So the November China CPI was higher and, and I was going to do this when we talk a little bit about a trade idea that I have, but they... Spending, retail spending was also up 10% in the month of February. So I wonder if, sure, they're championing their Huawei phone over there because it's yeah, Chinese it and it, it's their phone, yeah. just like maybe the iPhone is America's phone per se. Uh, the Huawei would be that. But I just wonder if a lot of the Chinese stuff is a little bit overblown there, if they will buy these Apple products that they come through. They still have those mega headphones that they charge like a thousand, AirPods Max right. or Air, yeah, whatever right. they are. I feel like they are really high quality, I feel like. I don't know. They even but, said they're disgusting. Yeah, but for that price, I, I, I feel like, and I had this talk with uh, my 21 or 2-year-old, and he said the same thing. When is Apple going to do something different than anybody else? Because Zuckerberg came out and actually said that he thought the Oculus was performing maybe even better. Yeah. And I feel like they're trying to step out with the Apple Vision Pro. And that's something interesting. Too high of a price target, yeah. a price a tag on that. But I feel like China's the key to this. And if China starts to rebound, I feel like money will get put back into Apple. On the AirPods Max, every other person at our gym mm -hmm in their 20s. Has those head? Has those headphones. But they're the I'm, ones- I'm not even over- I'm talking about the ones that have yes, over the like head. Like over ear, the are big square- Are those comfortable to work ones. out in? I Apparently. thought the AirPods Max are I'm the AirPods. I'm not even over exaggerating. Every other person at the gym has those. So, it, so on the treadmill, it goes you not having them, then yes. someone else that does have them. Yes. I'm there with my JBL- Loser. Yeah. <laughs> cheap. Loser. Uh, wireless headphones and everybody else has I say that headphones. jokingly, but that's the whole point. Exactly. Is people look at you and be like, you don't have these? What's wrong with you? Yeah. And it's just, it's that new, and we talked about a lot of money is going to hit the hands of 30, 40, 50 year olds pretty soon when the population dies off. The stock, the generational wealth that was built on the stock market alone from companies like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, big tech names, they do not have a problem, and I don't either, putting money into products where you've simply been trusting these products for a long time, you prefer them over the other, now you're into the ecosystem, whether or not those air, I mean, could they sell those headphones for a hundred bucks more? All those people are still buying 100%, 100%. them. 100%. You know, they're good? They're good. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm seeing. Of course they are. Of course they are. Because everyone else has them. No, but it's not about that. It's about their making it good not, products. No, it's not, Brendan. <laughs> if I bought it, look, if I switched over to the iPhone like I did and I didn't think it was that good, yeah. I would have just gone right back to the no, Pixel. No, I, I completely agree. They make great stuff. The same I'm reason not... why you're never going to switch to Pixel. You're happy with the performance of it, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Until you have an Apple product and then you'll switch for it. I just switched my internet at home, but that we'll save that for- Internet uh, at home, why, why, why did you make that decision? We'll, we'll switch that for, uh, or save that for next episode. No, we're not. Why did you make that decision? <laughs> Rogers. Oh, so what quality of service or uh, price is price, what I'm getting at? quality of service, okay, annoyance after very, very long time. Right, like, I agree. Well, Customer service. Story. It's a long story. And that's something that AI is not going to solve, by the way. 
because yeah, I, I like the chatbots, yeah. but I just feel like getting to somebody, don't you always feel like that's where the We solutions? had that company on. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What was that? Vocodia? Vocodia? Something like that? Yeah, vo well, let's go with that. Vocodia. They, that's they <laughs> apparently have completely replaced call centers. Right. To a point where it's like conversational. Okay. We'll see. Um, let's keep going. Uh, Microsoft, Sam Altman went to Dubai and got some money um, on the AI front. I remember going back a month or so ago, he was trying to raise I I still, I still don't, seven trillion. I still don't believe that story. Uh, we we didn't it. actually find out how much he got from this. Um, yeah, because fund. it's not even doesn't have a it's T not even in it. It doesn't have it's anything. Not it might not even have a B in it. The bigger the bigger point here in question, um, real quick. If OpenAI makes chips, chips, yeah. Microsoft stands to benefit massively. Because the chips will be specific to that technology. Exactly. Right, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, look, Microsoft, we've talked about the trillion dollars probably at this point that Microsoft's added to their um, market cap, market cap yeah. since sort of this AI boom. And everyone thought that Google was way behind Microsoft. And you know what, to be quite frank, I mean, Google keeps on stepping on itself a little bit here. So I think Microsoft's in the lead spot there with Copilot. Yeah. I bought Google this week. Monday. And the good thing about that is those shares will never be sold because that is your strategy. Oh, hell yeah. Why did you buy it? Because of the 200 period? Um, no, it was just the time of the month where I typically put some money into the market. Every single month at that same time, I do that. So I also bought the, I, did, I bought the, the S&P, but I do it through an ETF. So do you get like a little reminder on your phone? Yes. That, okay, and then, <laughs> right, and then that's what I do too. Literally. I stupid stuff like that. <laughs> I'm actually, I've never really got myself on a schedule. It's kind of bad. Yeah. I should be dripping. So I do, um, do you have drip set? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. Every time there's a dividend, I'll buy more shares. But I don't have a monthly buy program in. The only thing I do have is for my kids. So which I have is, an RESP. Which is, still, which is still something. Government matches here in Canada. I, I should say Ontario, but uh, 20%, which is pretty good. My loss. Um, Your gain, dude. My loss. Loss what? I mean, do you know how much money these kids? I sent eight hundred dollars again yesterday. Marissa's like, "Oh, did you send that money to?" I won't. Say, I won't say who. Uh, did you send that money to this organization because uh, my daughter has more hockey to practice? We have three minutes. For what? Until the world blows up. Okay. Well, then let's do this. Uh, three minutes till those SMCI imbalances uh, yes. be up or down. Uh, next week, still. I mean, there's some earnings that are going to trickle in. Um, Xpeng, uh, Micron, Chewy, Nike, notable, FedEx, notable, economic bellwether, um, Lululemon coming next week. Stores around yep. here Anybody are still insanely in busy, so Lululemon, definitely one to watch. Um, that's coming Thursday after the close next week. Uh, we get Tencent Music on the China Note, uh, and then there's some others, but who cares? Um, Lulu. I hit the fail and no one can see that because I don't, I don't, I'm not an, interested at all in Chinese names. Exactly. So who cares? Lululemon, though, is uh, interesting. Have you looked at that chart lately? It's funny because a couple of podcasts ago I said I'm wearing Lulu pants here. The gray ones, I'm wearing the blue ones tonight. No, I haven't looked at the chart. But on that note, I do have a trade that I've talked about before as well. And this is going to be my trade idea for the week one more time. Oh, you have it up? What is that? That's I'll... Lululemon's chart. Okay. It's looking like it's uh, starting to do things. I mean, down? We, no, no, up again. What the, oh, I, I typed in L-U-L. I mean, it L it, it had on. its little down move to uh, 450. Is L that the down move? <laughs> That's 450. No, I know, but is that really what we're calling a down move? It's only up 2% from that down move. I know, I know. No, I'm staying away. I, I, so from what we saw from Adobe right now today, I just worry about, about some of these high-flying names that, that have ugly. PEs you know, in the 50s or 60s. Let me find out exactly right now what this PE is on Lulu because that, that's my big worry spot right now. A lot of, these, a lot of money is going to come out of the market if you guide anywhere near the low end. Yeah. It, it, they're going to hit it. And Lululemon is, is again, a great stock. I like the stock. But I'm going to find out right now what's... Because remember Costco went down on earnings? If Costco can, can go down, so can Lululemon. So here it is right here. Um, they're okay. So their forward P is actually not bad right now. It's only 33. So that's okay. But their current P is 59. So that's where you get the problem that if they guide uh, way lower, then that PE is going to rocket to the upside. And that's going to create a little bit of a problem for Lululemon. The stock that I want to talk about right now is Nike. I'm excited for that one. Look at this PE, Brendo. You're only at 24. 
Every time I call you Brendo now, I have that in my head because Sharif calls it to you like 14 times a day. And then my, my daughter, the last, time, the last time they picked me up, we were going down to, I think, a hockey game again. And my wife got in the car and said, oh, uh, Gia waved and said, hey, Brendo. And she thought that was pretty funny. I think she thought that was your name, actually, because that's, that's how you're referred to <laughs> in my household. Uh, but OK, so let's go over about why we think Nike has a good chance today, uh, next week. What is the date? Uh, hold on a second. Nike shows up here. It's the 21st, is it? Uh, uh, what, 21st, yeah. Post market on the yeah. Post market on the 21st for Nike. Okay, so last time they beat, they had an EPS of 103 versus 85. That's a beat, but they missed on China, so they missed on the Chinese sales. That created a, a little bit of a problem for them coming back down to the downside. I'd say, needless to say, what are you laughing at the chart? <laughs> uh, Oh, man. Okay, we're going to wrap this up real quick. But this is the thing. This is the thing. I think that China, we had that hot CPI number that we talked about. Yeah. They're spending money in China. It's up 10% retail month over month. I like that. And with Chinese New Year that just happened, that's a big time for celebrations. Yep. It's a big gifting time. Yep. We know that um, China and sales for Starbucks and for big names like a Lululemon and like a Nike, they like their big brands. I think Nike has a chance here to have a much better number from China. And you're just, look, you're below the 200 period moving average. I can't say that we're going to load into this name. But if you get a dip here into 90 bucks, I really like that. Unfortunately, I'm not in love with retail, but I think with Nike earnings coming through, and I want to thank Adara for some of this. She gave me some of these numbers. Also, Adidas has been bad, and I know this has nothing, you don't, you're going to not, not care about this, but they had that controversy with Mr. Kanye West, formerly known as Kanye West. Thursday. Now known as my guy, Ye. For uh, NKE. Um, I was going to mention something, but who cares? Uh, let's... Talk about what's coming up next week, because it's going to be um, a pretty exciting week. Again, uh, the Fed obviously going to be the uh, headliner on Wednesday, uh, 2 o'clock. Make sure you're with us. We'll have it live. We'll have Fetcher Powell live at 2.30. It'll be, again, more about what happens at 2.30, not so much about what happens at 2 o'clock. Um, depending on those comments, though, we could get uh, some sort of action in the overall market. Uh, we mentioned the earnings. There's a little bit of manufacturing PMI data. Um, there's this NVIDIA conference. Just keep it in mind, it might be nothing. It might be huge. Um, it's four days, uh, typically on a, a multi-day product-related conference. You get everything at the beginning, and then the rest is just absolutely nothing. So we'll watch that starting on Monday for NVIDIA. And then let's talk about good things. First of all, that's the reason to buy Adobe that conference. NVIDIA. NVIDIA and Adobe, they've already talked about being in bed together. There's going to be some things happening on that side. You should be buying Adobe maybe in and around these levels. And then one thing I didn't get to show okay. because we went back to you and then you immediately went to one good thing, which is sure. fine. You're the host, um, is down here. Look at this. A lot of us don't consider Nike being a huge dividend grower. But as you can see right here, companies with dividend growth rates, five-year dividend growth rate, Goldman Sachs, 28% increase over the last five years. Nike takes the 10th spot here, right near Costco and D and Lilly and Visa and Oracle and Home Depot. So these are all names we've all heard of, 11%. Uh, so again, it's only paying around 1.5. I had no idea Domino's was that high. Yeah, Domino's has been hot fire, man. That's a crazy stock uh, there to the upside. Have you ever heard of a show uh, called The Gentleman? I have not. It's an immediate watch for you. Oh, you know what? I saw it has this. Gus Fring here from Breaking Bad. And so basically, and I didn't realize this guy turns into this kind of a pimp, but this is a great show. <laughs> and basically, yeah, this guy, this guy, this guy, um, he inherits um, a huge, huge fortune. His family's loaded, but he doesn't realize that there's a weed farm in the back. No, but it's Perfect. really cool. It's a really awesome. Sold. It's, it's so fun. And you know who directs it, which is the best part? My guy. Guy Ritchie. So Sold. lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. I mean, there's been some great, I, I just think he's directorial, yeah. creator. Yeah. Great. It's like, yeah. That, so anyways, the, like Quentin Tarantino. If he ever did something, I'd watch it. It actually looks like the, the thumbnail anyways. It looks like the last movie he did. I forget what it's called right now, but it's very similar. Yeah, to it is. That it kind is. of feel. So it's I, really I saw that, that on Netflix, but we, did, we haven't watched it yet. Yeah, yeah brand new. Um, brand new. What, I'm gonna you, go, what do you I, got? I'm going to go a totally different um, angle here. And I'm going to give a shout out here to IPOs. 
Because it's been a few years, if you're a trader, you know, and we're around 19, 20, 21 even, I guess. Yeah, those are good years. It seemed like once a month we were sitting here, even on the show, talking about some decent... I thought you said 1921. <laughs> no, 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 like 2019. Oh, man, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, those were great IPOs back 2021. then. 2021. <laughs> yes. Okay. I hated those IPOs, but not, now you're going to go. No, but... It, the excitement, the trade opportunity right. for traders. It seemed like once a month we were sitting around here talking about, you know, what's the next IPO? And then we would wait for it. Yeah, and then we'd, we'd be like, here, get our orders ready. And then we'd run to the bathroom. That was the best. Run back to the That was the, the best. Dust. We're like, would it open up while we're still on the exactly. air? Exactly. Yeah. That was we, we would wait until 3 o'clock in the afternoon to eat lunch because we wouldn't leave our, our computer monitors. But we're getting Reddit next week. <laughs> it's 10% of, of the shares. I know, but what did Why ARM are companies do? companies doing this? I mean, I was just there. See ARM. Yeah. Why are companies exactly. doing this? Exactly. It's because then when you come out with a report and you realize that maybe you're beating, like come over here and show, show the ARMs just quickly because this is what happens when you beat and everyone realizes that they need to get in. Yeah. So, but look what happened. ARM did the same thing and it actually went down off of its IPO. It nothing. Before eventually so basing yeah. out and buying this $50 mark. I just worry about Reddit because... And again, I, I just think that these large language models, Reddit, until they can somehow figure out what information is real, and they're going to be paying mods with, yeah. sh with shares. So I feel like that could help if they can sort of get that going. We have a great mod as well. But at the end of the day, I just want to see the price action on it. Will you be buying that open? Not to hold, but I mean a trade. For a trade, maybe. I think there'll be a lot of retail interest in it. Anyways, uh, March 21st, 6.4 billion. Fabian likes it. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, uh, he's gonna ask a question. Go ahead, question. Fabian. Go ahead. What about the DGENs? What about Wall Street bets with Reddit? That's Is what that I a mean, catalyst? Yeah, yeah, like retail possible. traders going to be all over this. I, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of I think we need more Fabian on the show with, with high quality I, no, questions. I, I, I do no, I think he's right. Yeah. And that's the problem to me though, is, is that are these investors? Like, is there enough money in there like these DGENs, as, as Fabian called them. I mean, well put, well put. Oh, they call themselves that. Okay, okay, okay. There may Do they or may have not enough money? No, what I'm here. saying is, is that are they, are they at the point in their life where wealthy investors will come in and do that? But we've seen the move when the people get behind something, man. GameStop, yes. AMC, yes. all of that. $6.4 billion. But remember, maybe there's some negativity towards Reddit because Reddit also halted Wall Street bets at that time. They remember they closed... Uh, for I think, I don't know if it was for a couple of hours or whatever, but they stopped people from joining Wall Street Bets, and I think yeah. they might have even shut that community down for a minute. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we used to get excited about a billion. If there, if, there was an I, if there was an IPO that was a billion, everyone would stop what they're doing and, and come running. And this, this is, is five or six. Six. And, six and a half. Right. So yeah, it's, it's a big one. It's, it's not a big nothing. One. It's a big well, one. Uh, March 21st, next week. Uh, like coming it. Up. Uh, I think yeah, we did I don't it. I like it, but. We'll wrap it up. Market cap of ARM is 131 billion. As I was saying, we'll wrap it up. Wow. If you're wondering oh. what the market cap of uh, ARM was, do you have something else? Wait, there's more. I just want to show you one thing here. Sure. So this is Nike. What does this say? Nike is still the king of athletic apparel. They're dominating everybody else in sales. So you just got to get, like, they're 51 billion here. Um, Adidas, this number is coming down after last quarter, 23 billion. Lululemon, the name that we're all talking about, is 20% the revenue of Nike. So, like I said, if they can get that all sorted out, fine, great, and dandy. Saudi Aramco, I want to talk about a little bit because they've had a monster, but we'll do that maybe next uh, episode. Happy well, weekend. Energy, I think, is a great trade as well. Uh, another episode in the books here. Episode, what is this? What number is this? 18? What did you say uh, about 20 again? Uh, we got to get to 20 and then we're good. Uh, have a, a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Join us live on YouTube every single day. Check out the mobile streams. Bye-bye.